Yo, what is up everyone, and welcome back to another YouTube video with your host, Ken Coogan, and today we're going to talk about Gambit Prime. Now, this is a semi-scripted video. Now, what I mean by semi-scripted, my friend keeps telling me, you should really script these out. People on YouTube do it all the time, blah, blah, blah. I'm bad at writing. I'm bad at scripting. I'm not a book writer. I have thoughts and ideas. So, I have, like, bullet points, and I'm going to look at it on this piece of paper and try to cover it, and hopefully this is all going to make more sense and not be all over the place. And it's going to kind of collect my thoughts into one spot. That's what I've done with other videos. Uh, some videos I've done just without any kind of scripting. And it's it's worked out okay, but probably not as okay as I would like it to be. So, Gambit Prime. First on the list, Gambit Prime defined Gambit Prime. Gambit Prime is Destiny's next Gambit mode where it makes a hybrid of PvE, PvP player experience. Where it, com where it pits both aspects of the game. Now it's one of the more unique elements in Destiny 2. It was never introduced in Destiny, but Destiny 2, and it kind of bridges this gap. Um, how fun that is depends on you. I like Gambit. I like Gambit Prime. Is it my favorite game mode? No. Trials is. That's gone. Again, whole different topic. So, Gambit Prime. We have defined Gambit Prime. Now, we're going to talk about a little bit of the similarities and differences. Gambit Prime is similar to Gambit, whereas there is one round, you go around killing enemies, you collect moats, you bank them, you send blockers over, you kill blockers, you invade, you kill invaders, you kill a boss, and that's it. But it's all done in one round. There isn't two rounds. It's one round, one boss. Differences. There's quite a few differences. M moats draining. Let me pull that out because I have this... Uh, in case I forget, I have it actually written specifically on the paper. One of the differences is moat strain. If you send over two or more blockers to the enemy team and they have moats banked, they will start draining the moats. And if they don't kill them down to one blocker, they're going to lose moats from their container and it's going to go into yours. Now you could, a couple things could happen. One, nothing. Besides gaining moats. Two, you can get an invasion portal off of it Three, you could summon your boss off of it. Once your boss is summoned, you can't drain any more moats because it's too late, boss is out. You also can't drain moats from the enemy if you cannot gain moats yourself. I'm glad I thought of that. So, another difference is the damage phase. Later on in the video, you're going to see three witches. There's going to be a damage phase for them. For the boss, you're going to have to kill two witches. A third one pops up. You have to kill the third witch. A well of light will spawn under her. Now, these well of lights are set in stone. They do not change. You can actually look at a little black orb blob on the ground, and it will tell you exactly where that well of light is going to be. Now, it's a relatively big area. You don't have to stand directly on the black orb because four people aren't going to fit there, and you're going to be the war cliffs in the back, kick uh, 1Ks in the shoulders. A lot of people are going to be killing themselves doing that so you can kind of spread out a little bit but if you're not in or directly hovering above this well you're not going to deal damage and in this video you see my teammates outside of the well dealing damage and it's piss poor compared to mine because it just is and I wish I would have showed you the difference I wish I would have stood outside shot the boss and then stood in shot and shot the boss and just shown you the difference of numbers but it's literally uh compare it from like 40 damage to 4,000 damage, right? Thousands of percentage of a difference. So that's a difference. So we covered one round difference. We covered damage phase difference, moat straining different. Oh, we need to cover briefly, and I'm not going to go too in depth with it, but it is the armor of the game. Gambit Prime has specific armor. Now, I'm going to talk about the armor briefly. There are four sets. You have the Invader set, the Sentry set, the Reaper set, and the Collector set. And all four are unique and do certain things. One of the biggest things that I've seen, and I'm going for the Collector set myself, is you can grab up to 20 moats from 15 and send over giant blockers. I have yet to see these. They can be obtained in the game now, to my understanding. I have not done it because I'm saving my moats, my synths, which is the currency for getting the armor, which you have to play Reckoning for. I'm saving it for level 3. When level 3 hits, that's where I'm going, that's what I'm doing, and I want the armor from there. I don't want level 1 to level 2, I just want level 3, because that's a lot of synths to go through. So one more thing I need to bring up, when you're in the waiting lobby and people start wearing these armor sets and they're glowing and you see three people on your team and they're like, oh man, look at this, three invaders. 
don't automatically assume they're going to invade. They may like the color red, they may be colorblind, and not, and they may be illiterate and not know what the hell they're putting on. And they're just putting it on because it's the highest statted number in their armor. Or it, the pattern looks cool and they're like, hey, I like this pattern, let me put it on. You don't know this, so do not assume they're going to invade. Do not assume the invaders. I, I guess you can say that for the rest of them, but... Let's be very specific and say invaders do not assume people wearing invasion armors are going to invade at all. So that being said, loadouts, it, uh, in the video earlier I showed my loadout. I'm using Chaos Reach, I'm using 1K, I'm using Geomags. So the exotic armor is Geomags, the exotic weapon is the 1000 voices, and the super of my choice is the Chaos Reach. It does, the Chaos Reach does it all, it kills enemy invaders. It I kill enemies when I invade with it, I kill bosses, I kill ads, it does everything you want it to do. Some supers, uh, I won't go into detail, but some supers aren't going to be that effective. Most of the one and done supers I wouldn't even recommend um, that much. I would, it's, it's hard to say what I would recommend. I would have to give it thought and maybe I'll come up with a video of recommended supers and not supers. Let me write that note down real quick. Please bear with me. Video recommended and I spelled that all wrong, supers. All right, so um, that's my loadout. That's what I use. If you don't have the 1K, you could use the Ward Cliff. I heard people were melting the boss with the Ward Cliff because it's just dumb strong. Um, if you don't have either of those, uh, I am sorry to hear that. Pick something with cluster bombs. That's been pretty promising in Destiny, even though, well, I guess I nerfed it. Uh, it's, maybe you want something that can help you kill invaders, and you want to pick a super that's more suited to killing the boss so maybe you want a machine gun thunderlord there we go that's a good one to use uh there are better i think there's another heavy machine gun that works better than thunderlord for killing players because i think it has a little more range and a little more stability could be wrong i don't know don't really use the machine gun so we've covered loadouts prime armor synth uh, make invaders, uh, don't mistake invaders based on armor. Teammates, here we go. Group and non-group teammates. Now, I don't play a lot with groups. I play a lot solo. When I do play with groups, it's most of the time not full groups. So, number one, if you are without a full team, and it doesn't matter if you have two people on your team or not, and there's a solo person on your team, or you are the solo and it's a team of three, if you are not going to invade do not grab the heavy on the wall. Let someone else grab it or give them the opportunity to grab it because most of the time I will invade. I will want heavy to really help me out. It is just another tool to use. I can use it. It's going to do a lot of good and it's going to help me kill enemies. This map is big. Now, uh, let me touch up on the size of the map. The size is so big that sometimes when I invade, and I can't use the portals to teleport, and if you see me jump through it, pay attention. They're, they're set in stone. There's two. One goes to one side, one goes to the other. But I've spent, I would spend 10 seconds of my invasion time traveling to the enemy, especially if they're um, hiding among the rocks. Maybe they're not hiding, but they're just killing enemies, and I just really have to travel, and I can't use the portal one way or the other. So travel time is huge. So the size of the map does play a role. I almost lost the thought. In fact, I kind of did lose my thought on what I was saying. So with that said, I'm going to move back on with heavy ammo. Oh, yeah, that's right. I use heavy ammo to uh, when I invade. I use the 1K. I can shoot it on little rocks and walls if they're hiding behind it. It really helps me out. If I didn't have the 1K and I didn't have something to blow people up with, invaders would be at a disadvantage, actually in this game mode because they would have to travel so far across the map maybe get one kill they'd really have to pick and choose i think that would be a bigger disadvantage than bungie would have intended but i think right now it's relatively balanced well and people probably don't realize it so invaders heavy ammo again give the other person if you're not an invader give someone else the chance to grab the heavy ammo if they leave it on the wall at that point in time go ahead and pick it up now, if you're invading with heavy ammo, if you watched me earlier, I used my 1K to kill everything. There was a lot of moats to be uh, denied by killing the enemies. I did not hold back on my ammo. But if there were not, I let's say I invaded and as I got there, an enemy died 
with 15 moats and now they kind of collectively have zero between them I wouldn't go around and keep killing all of the enemies with my 1k I would use my primary my shotgun even if I got zero kills I would be more greedy with it because I'm gonna be able to come back to my side of the map and help my teammates by killing the boss or killing big enemies or groups of enemies or clearing out my uh, the moat bank to stop my moats from being drained there's plenty of opportunity to use it other than just invading but I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be so greedy with it where I'm gonna invade and not use my heavy ammo to secure the kill I'm going to use it the same with my super I would use my super as well to kill enemies that have a lot of moats so try to be smart with your heavy that's one tip and it can help out you know any team if you're not an invader give the you know give someone else a chance to get it if you are an invader you know go ahead go to the heavy ammo a few seconds early stand there really try to get the really try to get the heavy and then invade with it immediately you know and use it you know uh, if you have to and hopefully your teammates will kind of catch on and be like alright he's using heavy ammo and he's invading and he just got four kills maybe it was cheesy doesn't matter your teammates are gonna be like let's let this guy get more heavy and you guys are gonna have to rely on getting heavy off the ground so you three that are not invading with your heavy can be a little bit more stingy than the invader he can come back and be like alright I'm gonna use my heavy here and there hopefully my teammates will be able to hold some for the boss etc etc um, next topic, overly greedy, not greedy enough, um, invading passive or aggressive. Here we go. If you are invading an enemy team and they are being highly passive, they are not attacking you, they're defending, they're hiding, and they have no moats, and maybe you're not that great of an invader, maybe you got knocked into the portal by the boss, maybe you wanted to go in because no one else on your team can do it and someone has to do it. Spending 30 seconds or whatever the time limit is just sitting there and being an ominous presence in the face of the enemy team could go a long way for your team. They're not killing the boss. They're not killing blockers. They're not grabbing moats. They're not doing anything. They're waiting for you to make the move. That's huge. That's a, that's a lot of time kill. Let's say you are a good invader, but maybe your time is better spent because they don't have moats. Just scare them away. Block them off. You know, try to make them fall back. You can add a little bit of strategy and forethought to this. I'm about to farm my teammates from this rocket. Oh, I hope you guys enjoy this. You can put some thought into your invasion plays before that. Now, that being said, now that you've watched this video and you've heard me say, but uh, talk about it. If you're invaded, do not be overly defensive. It you could have one moat, fifteen moats. Try to put yourself, if you're not that great at killing enemies, try to put yourself by your teammates. One. Two, put yourself in a position where maybe you can take some cover and stay alive. Don't just outright hide. The best thing you can do against an invader is locate the invader. Now, there are multiple spawn points in this map. I think there's four. There could be six in regular Gambit there's three set in stone I could look at one if I don't see you spawn there I'm gonna look at number two if I don't see you spawn there well guess what you spawn behind door number three that's where I'm gonna look that's probably where I'm gonna go but you're not that good at killing enemies you're not that good at uh, PvP at least locating where the enemy is is gonna help you out pay attention to your radar once the boss is out especially enemies spawn in very specific locations besides the boss these witches are the only other ads with their little henchmen to guard them their bodyguards so to speak on the map so if if you just killed all the witches and the witches spawn on the other side of the map and something red shows up on your radar it's probably not the boss it's probably the invader right so try to you know if you can't use your radar if they're not that close use your eyes use your common sense try to deduce where they're at if you can't kill them you can have a better chance at avoiding them and also slowing them down pop out shoot a couple bullets at them slow them down and then you know maybe they won't push you as aggressively maybe like, all right you know any second you can burn helps out um don't be afraid to use your super your heavy especially if you have 15 moats i'm not saying you need to be the forefront of the team but you need you know maybe your team's not going to help you you're going to be in situations where you're isolated anything that you can do to alleviate the pressure that the invaders putting on you is going to help 
So passively or aggressively handling invaders or using invasions to your advantage. We've covered that. Um, recommended supers, that's a whole different thing. So I guess we're coming down to the damage phase. There we go. Alright, so yeah, the damage phase. So we're already in the damage phase on the video. There's about three minutes left, so let's see if I can wrap this up. So you have the three you have three witches. There's two witches are the envoys. You kill those witches. There's witch number one dead. You're gonna see I'm gonna kill witch number two, which spawns witch number three. All the witches spawn in the same location, they stay in about the same area, you're going to kill them. And once this third witch is dead, you're going to see a uh, location under this witch. It's kind of like a blacked out area. It's like void area once I get back from this invader. And it's going to drop the well of light. Now, it's similar to uh, the well from the Warlock Solar subclass. It's going to give you the damage buff that's needed to damage the boss. If you've been paying attention at all, you're going to see my teammates, they've been attacking this boss outside of the well, they're doing piss poor damage again. It's the difference between 40 points of damage and 10,000 points of damage, I assure you. Right here, I'm doing 10,000 points of damage. 10,000 points of damage. I am not standing directly feet on the ground in the well, but I am in the well, s floating slightly above it. Primeval Slayer 5, if you look at the left corner, and it's got a countdown timer of 7, 6, you have a limited amount of time to do damage to the boss, or he gets his immune shield. So, it's a rinse and repeat process of killing the witch, bringing the well out, and dealing damage. Um, one of the things I need to talk about with the dealing damage is holding a witch. This is one strategy you can do if you're with the team and you can coordinate it. Uh, you can kill two witches out of the three if you're in a team of four and then wait for the invader, kill the invader, kill the third witch, start your damage phase. That way you're not being invaded as you're trying to damage the boss. If you're with a team of three with one random, don't do anything to the witches. Wait for the invasion, kill the invader, decimate the witches, deal damage to the boss. At Primeval Slayer 5, that is the most potent amount of damage you can do. This is where you're going to really want to seal out the game. And if you're taking too long, the enemy team might get grow a brain between the two and figure out how to do the damage themselves. It's like, oh man, now we know what to do. Let's do this. So I have stopped invading. Usually I would be invading when their boss is out, but I'm trying to look for that sweet opportunity to kill my boss. Uh, and I haven't been grabbing the heavy uh, off the wall as often as I would. But I think that about covers it. We have the damage phase. We're going to... Yep, Chaos Reach, 1k, that dude in the back, and I mess up. We actually run out of time, so we just have more damage done to our boss. But if you like the video, hit the subscribe, hit the like, leave a comment if you want to see something specific in the future, which is why this video is coming out right now. And I will see you next time. Enjoy your day, and that's all I got.